Today we're looking at seven different ways to play an E chromatic scale, starting from here and ending up up here. The reason we're doing this is that as a final step in my book in terms of learning the musical alphabet on the guitar, this these series of exercises combines this horizontal learning of the musical alphabet with the vertical learning of the musical alphabet across the strings. So it brings those two concepts together finally. Follow the lesson for free and just pick up all the tips from the video, but if you're interested, this is number 79 to 85 in my book, Exploring the Fretboard, 100 Exercises for Intermediate Guitar, and there's a link for that in the description. So at this point, a lot of students might be asking, why so many chromatic scales? Well, it's really quite simple, is that it's the musical alphabet on the guitar. If you think of a pianist, you know, from the very beginning, it's pretty easy to understand that the, the musical alphabet just goes from left to right on their instrument. But on our instrument, yes, it goes from left to right, but it also there's a vertical aspect across the strings as well. So becoming super um, in tune with that and, and super familiar with the concepts of that and how semitones work across the strings, for example, or across the across the strings this way, or across all of the strings this way, um, is just so important. And it's almost ludicrous that we would practice all these other scales without understanding these fundamental things about the musical alphabet and our instrument. So this really is the foundation of everything else we do. When we think in terms of, of tones and semitones when we're building a major scale, um, we're building that off of the chromatic scale. We're building it off of the musical alphabet. So. It's the, it's the foundational building block that orients us on the instrument. And then from there, we, we pile other ideas on top of that. But this is the underlying fundamental aspect of our instrument. So that's why there's so many chromatic scales in the book. So what we're going to do in, in this series of exercises is we're going to play uh, through a chromatic scale. And we're going to shift up a different string each time. And when we shift up a different string, there'll be... Um, small micro shifts in order to to play the chromatic scale and by doing the, the the seven different ways it will teach you how it all works on our instrument much better than just playing one unlike the other exercises in this book at the once you've learned from 79 to 85 i want you to play them back to back as a, as a group so that you can really tell and really see how it all works. Um, learn them one at a time. So like just learn number 79 to start with and then learn number 80. But once you've done 79 to 85, I want you to play them back to back and really understand how, um, how they work. Now, throughout this whole experience uh, in this book, I've been saying to say the note names out loud, like E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. I understand that with these series of chromatic scales, there's a lot of notes, that's a lot of talking just in general. So what I'm going to ask is that when you're learning them individually, um, at least be able to, to say it, you know, just do it once or twice and be able to say the note names aloud, but then you can stop and just play the scale. And when you're playing them all back to back, you don't have to do it in this one particular case because there's it, it's just too time consuming. And in the video, I'm just going to be talking about other aspects to help you learn the scales. I think we should just dive in though, because um, it will all all the all the knowledge will come out just by playing it and by thinking about it. So, number seventy nine. This is a shift up the first string. So we're gonna play a chromatic scale. All the way up through first position. We're just going to carry up the first string. And then back down. That one is, is fairly straightforward. Um, 
you know, it's your first position chromatic scale across the strings, which we know about, and we've done lots of single string chromatic scales. So that one should be easy for you. Now, number 80, we're going to shift up the second string. When we reach the top of the second string, in order to go from the note B to C, there will be a small stretch, which I'll point out when I'm playing it. But that's the semitone, right? Uh, because we have A, A sharp, B, C. C is a small stretch outward between those two strings. And this is the point, is that as we do this on each string, we're going to really, again, emphasize, like we did in the A chromatic scales, the, the difference um, of how we traverse across the strings with semitones. So, number 80. So now we traverse up the second string. There's the semitone shift. We'll use our first finger there. And then there's the stretch back. Down the second string. So once you reach that B, you're just reaching out. Let's move the first finger up. There's the octave E, back down, stretch out, and then progress back down the second string. So uh, the lesson here is that we can play the same scale, but play it up the second string, but a semitone shift between those two strings involves a small micro stretch to, the, to that fret out there, instead of the four finger group. So number 81 is the shift up the third string. Now, between these two strings, there is no stretch. When you go from G to G sharp, there's no stretch. And it's just between the third and second string that there's no stretch because of the tuning of the guitar. A semitone is right in place with our four fingers there. So number 81. stretch but from the B to the C there's a stretch just like before stretch no stretch and back down the third string Number 82 is a shift up the 4th string. When we get to the top of the 4th string, there will be a reach out, but not between the 3rd the and 2nd thir and string, right? And then another reach out for the 1st for the string there. I'll go nice and slow when I get up there. So, uh, number 82 up the 4th string. the fourth string small stretch for the semitone no stretch small stretch for the semitone stretch no stretch stretch back down the fourth string Number 83 is a shift up the 5th string. So when we get up here, the semitone shift will be between A and A sharp. There's a stretch. 
and then another stretch, and then no stretch, a stretch, stretch, no stretch, 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 and then we'll go down the fifth string. So I'll, I'll play the whole thing for you, but <clears throat> just remember the only time you don't stretch when out or in is between those two strings there. So number 83 up the fifth string. is up the sixth string so when we get up to the octave there'll be a stretch there'll be a stretch there'll be a stretch not between these two strings there'll be a stretch so just all the semitones work the same way across most of the strings there's a small stretch involved except between the third and the second string which you'll, I mean, after doing each one of these, you're going to be very, very clear on this concept. So, number 84, shifting up the sixth string. So we go right up the sixth string. Small stretch. Small stretch. Small stretch. No stretch. Small stretch. down the sixth string. Now number 85 I, I threw in here just to give you an example of how we might use um, <clears throat> these kinds of concepts in repertoire. So often in repertoire we use an open string to shift from lower position to a high position because it allows us to have something ringing out while we move our hand. So this is an E chromatic scale three octaves with an open string shift. And we're shifting from this E to this F on the third string. So we're, we're plugging along C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and then going through our chromatic scale from there. So it's just, it links those two positions of the guitar with an open string shift. So number 85. Spend a lot of time with each scale, becoming very comfortable with it. Be able to say the note names out loud at least, you know, a couple of times when you when you practice it. You don't have to do it every time, like I said. Um, once you're comfortable with, with all of them, I would play them all back to back um, and to just really um, make sure that your brain is comfortable with the concepts. 
You shouldn't have to read the notes very much. Uh, the concept, once you start, like the concept should guide you. Maybe you'll read the notes just to see what fingering I use to, to complete the scale at the top. But the concept pretty much dictates where you put your fingers. Um, the idea that the next note is a, is a semitone out means you have to stretch out a little bit. Like the concept itself tells you all the information. And as you get really good at these things, your hand will know these things automatically. Now, if you've been working through this book from the very beginning, you're probably getting very comfortable saying the musical alphabet out loud and you have some good orientation to the guitar. So maybe these exercises won't be too difficult. But I think for, um, for many students, uh, uh, the way to do this with saying the no names out loud is to just learn the scale, like copy the, copy the video, look at the page. I have fingerings and string numbers and position marks. So, you know, just like learn how to play the scale. And then once you have that memorized, you don't have to look at the page anymore and you can just then start saying the note names out loud, right? So it, it'll just maybe simplify things for you. It's a lot of multitasking. It's a lot of notes um, and each one is different. So like just one at a time, take the exercise and learn it really well. And then say the note names out loud, like E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. And you know, when you get up to something like the B, C, C sharp, D, just make sure you're comfortable saying those note names out loud and, and how the shifts work. And, and then you'll have it, you'll be much more um, confident. Then move on to the next one and do the same thing with that. Just learn it really well. Then a couple times, just say those note names out loud. Make sure you can do it. And then move on. And then at the end, just play them all back to back. You don't have to say the note names out loud. And just understand how that works on the guitar. This is a very important lesson in our repertoire because we play things in different areas of the guitar all the time. And this is the exact same idea, except this is the idea using the most universal part of, of our musical language, which is the chromatic scale.